We're just making sure that we have all of them. Um, there's another one. There's another one. And that's the only ones that says OCT that I can see. Let me just go through it again. Yeah, it doesn't look like I've missed any. So now I already know that in my creditors allowance journal that there's going to be five transactions that I'm going to look at. So let's have a look now at them line by line uh, in the creditors allowance journal calculations tab. So only thing now I've done is I've brought all of those line items as it is given that has OCT in it and I bring it in here so I can show you how to do the calculation. The nice thing about the transactions that's marked original credit note, if you go back here, is in all the cases you will see that they've given you the amount there, they've given you the amount there, they've given you the amount there, they've given you an amount there, and they've given you an amount there. So the nice thing about the creditors allowance journal is Unlike what you had to do with the creditors journal, you, there's one way of doing the calculation, one process, and we follow that all through the long. OK, so now here it says that on the 5th, we return trading inventory to the supplier. That's what it says. And the, supply, the, the one to whom we are retaining it, uh, returning it is Poland traders. OK, so like always, we post the full amount to the creditors control. Credit, the full amount was given, so we simply put that amount there as under creditors control. Then, now remember, we are still busy working in a company that was said to us that they make use not of the perpetual, but on the periodic system. So we don't have, um, sales but we have purchases and purchases returns as opposed to um, sales returns okay so here we have a look so here says we calculate the purchase returns as follows simply take the full amount that was given divided by 1.15 we get the answer and then obviously we record the difference as the output fat so now when we go to our answer book we will say, OK, the document number was given. No problem. So we can just put it in there. Huh. OK, the date was given, so we can just put it in there. Under details, we are looking for the name of the creditor. It was given, so we can just put it in there. There is no folio because we cannot complete folio because we were not given the folio numbers, so we don't have to worry about that. The full amount was posted under creditors control. The purchase returns is the full amount excluding the VAT, so we divide it by 1.15. Did that on the previous page, and the output VAT is simply the difference between the two. Okay, let's have a look at the next transaction. Thing. The next one is what happened here on the 16th. So on the 16th, we returned inventory to Tinderbox. Once again, we post the full amount to creditors control. We calculate the purchases returns by dividing by 1.15. And we record the difference as the output fat. Okay, so let's do that. So document number once again, given. Date given, details given, full amount that was given recorded under creditors control, purchase returns calculated by divided that with 1.15, and the VAT output being the difference between the two amount. Good. Go to the next one, which is a little bit different because the next one does not refer to trading inventory. It says here, that on the 21st, when we bought that computer from ROM RAM computers, or actually the TV that we got purchased from them for the staff room, yeah, we were given a rebate. Okay, so what do we do? We post the full amount to creditors control, and we will also post the full amount to rebate receive under sundry, because in our answer book 
there is no column there that talks about TVs or staff equipment of anything. And because there is not any column there, we will have to record it under sundry. So what sundry column? So we're going to post the full amount to rebate received. So that will be the details under sundry as no output fat is payable. If we go back to the creditors journal, when we bought that TV from CDR computers, um, or oh, sorry, from ROM computers, ROM RAM computers, it was recorded as staff equipment and there were no VAT applicable. If there's no VAT applicable that we um, can claim when we buy the TV, there will also be no VAT applicable when we receive a rebate. It's like for like. Okay, so now we can complete it. We say, okay, the document number was given. The date was given. The details was given. It's ROM RAM. Okay. The creditors control is the full amount, but the only other column we have here, except for VAT is purchases returns. So in this case, we are talking about a rebate that was received. It's like an income, and it is the full amount because there is no VAT applicable on this transaction. Let's have a look at the next one. So now it is the transaction that applies to uh, to CDR computers. It says that on the 27th, we found that some of the office consumables uh, was defective and so we returned it to the supplier. That's what happened. Okay, how do we do this? Once again, in both the creditors journal and the creditors control journal, your main column is creditors control. So that is where your full amount goes every time. So we post the full amount to creditors control. We calculate office consumables just by dividing by 1.15 again, and we record the difference as the output VAT. Okay, let's go and have a look at that. So the document number given, date given. Okay, the details given at CDR computers, full amount recorded under creditors control. Okay. It was not purchases. Okay, so we cannot record it under purchases. It was office consumables. We calculated the amount by dividing with 1.15 and we record the difference as the output rate. OK, so that's four out of the five done. One transaction left here. Uh, sorry, let's look at the it here. So now we are talking about round track industries. Now, in the case of round track industries, um, we uh, received an amount for the returning trading inventory to the suppliers. So it's exactly the way we did it with the first two entries. We post the full amount to the creditors control. We calculate the VAT by dividing with 1.15 and we record the difference as the output VAT. So let's have a look here and then we do that. OK, so the document number was given. The date was given. Was given and I didn't put it. Oh, no, I don't know what went wrong there, but of a delay. OK, uh, the details is round tra track industries. As always, full amount posted under creditors control. This was purchases returns for which we have a column. So we divide by 1.15 to calculate that. And the VAT output is simply the difference. OK, now we've recorded all five of the transactions. And the most important thing now is that we do not forget to total the column. So we add up those amounts and we get to a total there of 6866.20. We add the VAT output amounts. We get to an amount there of 873.74. We add the purchases returns. And uh, then basically for the heck of it, we, we total the amounts in sundries. Like I always say to you, not technically needed because we are actually going to credit the individual accounts. So there's not a total for sundries in our um, 
uh, in our ledger. But uh, we once we total, we just continue to total. So what they want us to total, we're going to total it. In any case, it creates a, a nice thing to control the other amounts against um, later if you find out that there was a mistake. So let me quickly just um, wipe that out again. OK, so what happens with creditors control? OK, now remember that um, when we did our completion of our creditors journal, every time we recorded the transaction and the creditors journal, the amount was credited, OK, based on our accounting equation. Now, if we have a look at our creditors allowance journal, that must obviously then be debited. OK, because when we buy, we credit it. When we return, it must be debited. OK, so we're going to say debit that account. All the other amounts add up to that amount and the accounting equation must balance. So it shouldn't come to us as a surprise to you that when if we debit the creditors control, we are going to credit both VAT output and purchase returns as well as the individual accounts. In this case, the two individual accounts that will be credited is rebates received and office consumables. OK, and now you have full marks for this thing. So um, I actually forgot to say something last week. So let me just quickly go here. Here at the top where you have to fill in. Creditors Allowance Journal of Rash Manufacturing for March 2020, month three. Please, on the right hand side or service to the right that you can, you will have to put in a reference number and that will be CAJ3. It stands for Creditors Allowance Journal, third month of training. OK, that, so just remember to put that in because um, you will have to use this as a reference later, not in this question. But when we have a look at assignment three, when you complete your ledger. 